Welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Cheyenne and today I'm going to be doing a back to school art supplies haul slash college Q&A slash Swarthmore Q&A. If you guys don't know, I am a senior at Swarthmore College, although I might be finishing a little later than expected because of Corona and everything. Really quick, I want to apologize for the crickets in the background. I thought about filming inside, but I don't know, this video for me, especially because it's gonna be so artistic, had an outdoors vibe, so here we are. First, I'm gonna show you a few things that I got in preparation for my last year of college, last year and a half, I guess. All of the materials I'm gonna be using today are from Arteza, so if you see anything that I'm showing or talking about or using today and you wanna check it out, all the links for everything that I'm using in this video will be down below in the description. And yeah, thank you so much to Arteza for sponsoring this video. Let me show you guys what I got. Okay, so first I got two of these eight by 12 inch notebooks. <laughs> this is funny, someone actually asked me in a Q&A recently like do you prefer binders or notebooks and i'm such a notebook girl i don't know why i just love the freedom of being able to take notes in an unrestricted space this one doesn't even have lines so and yeah this is technically a sketchbook but i'm not particularly artistically inclined so i'm probably gonna use this for notes and other fun doodly things I also got this 14 set of multicolored gel pens. They're 0.7 and you guys, these run so smooth. All the notes that I took down for my questions for my Q&A today, I wrote with these pens. In order to film this video, I also got this watercolor pad. It's got 32 sheets, I believe. It's pretty good size, like you can see <laughs> Cheyenne's head for scale. I also got their premium 36 watercolor collection. You can see on the back how many colors it comes with. And my favorite thing about this is that it is very amateur friendly. So as I said, I'm not particularly artistically inclined. If I ever do art, it's like for stress relief. And this is perfect for me because it literally comes with a watercolor pen. You fill up this little compartment with water and then you can just dip into whatever colors you want and go from there. It's always been somewhat ironic to me that I'm not very good at art because my mom is an artist. Like she literally paints for a living. So I like to hope and pray that she doesn't consider me a disappointment. <laughs> Last but not least, the story behind these last few items is actually pretty funny. Last semester I had a calendar in my room, like a dry erase, but it got so messy so quickly and I just wanted something nicer and more compact, honestly, to fit on my wall to write little notes on. So I thought, why don't I get like a chalkboard with liquid markers? Lo and behold, I go to get the chalkboard and I purchased the one with the totally incorrect dimensions. <laughs> I thought it was gonna be like 15 centimeters by 33 or whatever, but it was 15 inches by 33 inches. And if if you can't tell just by me saying that is a very large size so this is the chalkboard that came for me <laughs> um i think i should be able to fit my daily schedule on here don't you think <laughs> for the chalkboard i also got these water-based chalkboard markers i loved these because they came with a ton of earth tones which is clearly totally up my alley and then i got just like their cleaner set to be able to clean the chalkboard regularly which will hopefully solve the problem that i was having with the dry erase board so I guess I should get my paint set up and then we should get into some questions. Oh my God, I'm gonna get eaten alive by mosquitoes out here. Yee! I thought for a little bit about painting like a scene from Swarthmore, like a place on campus, but then I was like, eh, I'm gonna be in that town for the next eight months. I don't need to start thinking about it just yet. So yeah, I think I'm just gonna paint a little trail in the woods, maybe a little person walking down through it. And again, please, be kind in the comments. I'm really not artistically inclined. I just wanted to do this because I thought it would be a fun, stress relieving activity. So the first question someone asked me was, what year am I in? Should be an easy question, but it's a bit of a complicated one, like I alluded to previously. Technically, I'm a junior, but I planned to graduate in three years, like coming in. So then technically I'm a senior, right? But because this whole year is online for me, I think I'm gonna take a lighter course load and just graduate a semester late. So I'm like between junior and senior, if that makes any sense. 
Another common question I got asked was, what's my major? I'm actually majoring in cognitive science with a minor in music. So two unrelated things, but two things that I love very, very much and couldn't see my Swarthmore experience existing without. The next question I got asked was, what was your mindset at the beginning of your freshman year? I kind of went into freshman year with a very open mind. Going into a school like Swarthmore, I was kind of intimidated. There's a lot of smart people there. So I kind of went into it thinking, you know, I probably have a lot to learn. <laughs> and I kind of just reminded myself over and over again that Cheyenne, you don't know everything. And kind of welcomed whatever conversations and situations came my way. This doesn't look too great. Yeah. Okay, someone asked, how hard is Swarthmore really? <laughs> it's hard, it's really hard. One thing I will say though, is that it is what you make of it. My biggest tip for academics at Swarthmore is utilize every single resource that they give you. Swarthmore has a lot of resources, like a lot. Whether it be like help sessions or individual meetings with professors, it's a really small school so you get to know your professors really well. And if you need help and you want to talk to them about something, 99.9% .9 of the time they will gladly speak to you about it. One of the biggest mistakes new Swarthmore students make is like feeling embarrassed about reaching out for help. And that's normal, but like the way to succeed is to make use of your resources. And for me that mostly looked like going to help sessions, going to TA sessions, forming study groups, stuff like that. So yes, Swarthmore is very difficult, <laughs> but it's not impossible to do well there. I just realized there's no white, so this might become a nighttime painting. <laughs> Dark blue sky. Can't say I'm proud. <laughs> Someone asked, what's the social scene like at Swarthmore? Okay, to be honest, because it's so small, it's kind of clicky, like high school clicky, in a way that like people who have similar interests usually like hang together in small groups and then don't usually branch out from that. So it can be frustrating sometimes to have that kind of social scene because you kind of feel like whatever group you joined in freshman year is where you're gonna end up, but I didn't end up in a group. I ended up flying solo somehow. So. It's not impossible to like mix and mingle between the groups. In fact, it happens often because students at Swarthmore are so multilateral with their interests. Like no one's just gonna be doing one thing at all times. Yeah, I think that's the best way I could describe it. Someone asked me, what's my favorite part of campus? I really like McGill Walk, honestly. Clearly I like paths surrounded by greenery. Yeah, either that or the amphitheater. They're just both so green and majestic. McGill Walk honestly makes my walks to class in the morning like really, really lovely and calming. Often cheers me up after a long day. If I'm like walking home, I always go through McGill Walk so I can at least smile a little bit. <laughs> Okay, I've painted some red trees. Now that I think about it, this kind of looks like the walkway between the science centers and Parish, like right next to LPAC on campus. If anybody goes to SWAT and knows what I'm talking about, comment down below. That's also one of my favorite places on campus. The next question is, what do you do when someone talks bad about you at college? Well. At first, when I was a freshman, I used to like take it really personally and get my feelings hurt, but then I realized they're probably projecting and someone speaking badly about you honestly says more about their own insecurities than it does about you, in my personal opinion. That's what I think. So that helped me like not really pay as much attention to it and kind of not take it as personally because it's hard not to at first. Those kinds of things like really hurt. They cut deep. So I think that's the best advice that I can give in that regard. Someone asked me, how do I deal with diet culture at college? And to be completely frank, I didn't really encounter any. They cited the freshman 15 as like an example of this, but no one that I was hanging around was talking about it at all. I guess any advice I have on that is like, just listen to your body. Don't start to eat a certain way just because other people are eating that way. You know, trust your gut and take care of yourself. Our bodies need nourishment to be able to think and do well in hard college classes. So yeah, I think that's all I can say on that. Someone asked, do a lot of people go to meetings for worship? 
Um, and I'm assuming you mean like religious meetings. There is a semi-significant religious presence on campus of all different kinds of faiths. I know that there's clubs for almost every major religion. I started the Baha'i Club with my roommate Katie. That was fun while it lasted. <laughs> Rest in peace. I have a bunch of friends who are Christian and they have their own group as well. So I feel like at Swarthmore, whatever faith you come in with, there will definitely be a place for you to be able to observe. At least that's been my experience. I mean, I thought I could. Someone asked me, how much does college cost you and how do you manage financial stress? My college is pretty expensive. I unfortunately don't receive any financial aid, but my family also can't afford to pay the full price. So I am 100% on loans, which is part of the reason why I wanted to finish early. But as far as how I manage financial stress, I'm honestly very blessed that at least during the school year, I don't experience that much because I'm able to pay for my off-campus living with my refund from my loan that doesn't go to on-campus living. So I don't have to worry about that. And then I actually have a scholarship that basically operates in a way that I can request money for or funds for kind of almost anything that I need. Obviously it has to be like warranted and meaningful, but as long as there's a need and as long as there's money in my fund, which right now there's still a good amount, then I don't really have to worry about it. So I've gotten really blessed in that way, but I do experience a significant amount of stress about, you know, paying off my loans in the future and that's honestly a significant part of why I started this channel is to be able to save up and pay them off in the future without having to really really stress you know so if you're seeing a lot of sponsored content lately I'm so sorry if that's bothering you but I promise it's not going like in my pocket like I'm not touching any of it it's going to future Cheyenne's happiness and welfare and honestly economic stability I'm just trying to do the girl boss thing you know this tree looks horrendous why did I Ugh. Oh, I don't know if it said the actual price. Swarthmore costs around $27,000 per semester. Oh, what a beautiful amount to say out loud. Jesus. I hate this country. Someone asked, what majors is Swarthmore known for? I would say definitely peace and conflict studies. They do a lot of study of what's going on in the Middle East, a lot of current events, and also all around the world. I would also say computer science and engineering. I think those are like the top three. Someone asked, how many people go there? Right now, the size is 1,600, I believe. So it's super duper small. Someone said, is it hard or easy to make friends? I think that kind of goes hand in hand with my answer to what kind of social scene is there. Like I said, there's like cliques that form at the beginning, but if you're not afraid of talking to people and opening yourself up to different people and different experiences, then I'd say it's pretty easy. Obviously, if you're someone who has social anxiety, then that will be a little harder. I actually got a question asking, like, do you have any tips for people with social anxiety? And since I do not experience that sort of thing, I would feel bad like speaking on it as if I know what I'm talking about, <laughs> which I don't. The only thing I can say, at least from my limited experience with mental health training and the internships that I'm doing right now and the classes I've taken are like, don't push yourself out of your comfort zone too hard to the point where it's like debilitating, but definitely know when is a good time to push yourself. Like if you got invited to a party and all your friends are gonna be there, but there are some new people too, like try to focus on the fact that all your friends are gonna be there and maybe that'll help you feel a little less weary about the fact that there's gonna be so many new people. I don't know, <sighs> that's a tough topic for sure. Someone's asked me, how are the professors? I personally think they're pretty great, like really awesome for the most part. They're very intelligent, which sometimes can be interesting because sometimes they don't really know how to properly teach the material. Like they're not as social because they're like so smart and know so much about what they're doing. So that can be a little tough sometimes, but I think it's a good problem to have with the person who's like literally educating you. Um, because sometimes if they're not that good at teaching, then you can just ask them questions about their research and you'll sometimes learn a lot more that way than you would otherwise. Okay, I've added some little flower bushes to try and salvage whatever's going on. I totally messed up the perspective with the trees. I like didn't put the right ones behind each other, which is sad, but what are you gonna do? 
Someone asked me if my family lived far away from my college. No, not really. It's about a two and a half hour drive. Someone said, why did I choose Swarthmore and what's unique about them? So I chose them for their cognitive science and music programs. That's honestly like the only thing I looked for. Since I knew what I wanted to study, I looked at colleges based on how good their programs were for what I was interested in. So Swarthmore had the most intriguing programs that I would want to do. So that's why I chose it. I also chose it for the size. I actually wanted to go to a small college so I would know my professors by name and have a personal connection with them. I learn a lot better in like one-on-one -on -one settings. So being able to speak with my professors and have them actually acknowledge me as a person, unlike what usually happens at larger universities, was definitely a huge thing that I was looking for in a learning environment. I also like the distance from home, like two and a half hours, not too far, not too close. Like my mom can't come bother me, but also if I really need to come home for an emergency, then I'm not too far away. I don't know what to do now. I feel like it's just, ugly and I have to just be okay with it. It needs something else, but I don't know what it needs. Maybe I'll make the path continue somewhere. I honestly feel like this might be the best it's gonna get. Let me finish up these questions while doing some finishing touches and then you guys can see what monstrosity I came up with. Someone said advice for people just starting college. Number one, don't be afraid to ask for help, whether it be a counselor, a dean, a uh, professor, a friend, just don't be afraid, an RA. Two, keep an open mind. And three, kind of in line with asking for help, use your resources. Just on the same note that I said before. Advice for a transfer to SWAT. Okay, so I actually don't know what I could say for this, seeing as that's not my experience, but I would just say, don't be afraid to ask questions. At Swarthmore, asking questions is not a sign of weakness, and it's not a sign that you're dumb or you don't know what you're talking about. In fact, when you ask questions in a classroom, a professor is often delighted <laughs> for an opportunity to talk and just appreciates your curiosity. So yeah, at least academically, that's my first word of advice. Socially, I can't really say much seeing as I kind of do my own thing, but yeah, good luck <laughs> if you're transferring, you're gonna do great. Someone asked me, since I wanna be a social worker, do I wanna get my master's? And yes, I most definitely do. I would love to get my master's in social work somewhere in New York City and then get licensed to become an LCSW, which gives you the ability to diagnose clinically. Someone asked me, what are the pros and cons of Swarthmore? I would say the pros are that it's freaking beautiful. Oh, that's not, well, that's another reason I chose the school. I have to be honest. Being outside and being in nature is a huge part of like maintaining good mental health for me. So for me, it was really important to choose a school where being outside in nature and being immersed in that was a possibility and Swarthmore had that, you know? It's literally an arboretum. So that's, that's pro number one is that it's gorgeous. Pro number two, you get a lot of individual attention because you're closer to the professors. You can get to know them if you'd like and that brings a lot of opportunities for research which doesn't happen at a lot of other schools. Some of the cons are that sometimes it can be too small, like you get tired of seeing the same people over and over again. And um, I guess this could be considered a con, but like it's really hard. But I'm guessing if you're interested in Swarthmore, then like you're very smart and capable and any school that you choose would be really hard. So I don't even know if that counts. Someone asked me if I was scared to go to college. And honestly, no, I've always been a pretty independent person, so the thought of college was honestly really exciting. I was like, oh my God, I'm finally an adult. I can finally be on my own. So no, I was not scared. If you are scared, I think the person who asked this said that they were scared. Don't worry about it. You're gonna be okay. You're gonna make friends and you're gonna have a blast. You're gonna have a great time, I promise. Obviously everything is very different now and difficult because of COVID. I can't even imagine starting as a freshman in this climate. That would be, ooh, I can't imagine what you guys are going through. I'm so sorry for that. But um, yeah, just keep your head high. And if tough things happen, just try to think of it as it was meant to happen and you're gonna learn and grow from that experience just as you would from a positive one. The very last question here is, is there anything a Swati should definitely do before graduating? Yes, try Taiko. It's kind of this like dance drumming class that you can take, very exhilarating. I'm very sad that I won't be able to do it before I graduate because that was one of my goals, but everyone I know who's taken it says that that's something you should definitely do. Take an art or music class, even if you're not artistic or good at music, there will be a place for you. It's a small school. People come in with all sorts of skills 
and backgrounds so you should definitely do that and the most important thing I would say is try to do your best to research professors that you like um, you like their area of interest you like what they study whether it be asking around or physically like looking them up on Google or rate my professor and make sure that you take a class with those professors before you graduate I think such a big part of a college experience is what professors you end up having if you have a bad professor but you like the class it literally could ruin your whole experience so really do your best to research who is teaching the class and sometimes even if you didn't think you would like the topic of the class itself the professor will make it totally worth it for you so you never know be completely open-minded I've definitely been surprised by classes before and yeah everything I'm saying in this video is just from experience I'm not trying to like dictate anyone else's experience it's worth more or say that my opinion is the only opinion this is a very subjective collection of thoughts that I'm giving so yeah anywho all that being said I think that was the last question so it's time to show you my atrocious painting <gasps> I told you I wasn't artistically talented. I did my best. I messed up here a little bit, which is really unfortunate. I thought the bushes would fix it. And then I just kept making the trees worse and worse as time went on. So clearly I should stick to music. <laughs> But yeah, if you guys enjoyed this video or learned anything, definitely be sure to give it a like. If you have any remaining questions, go ahead and comment them down below. I will get to as many questions as I possibly can. Ooh, be sure to follow me on Instagram. That is how I got all of these questions and I will definitely be doing more Q and A's in the future. So if you want to have your question answered or be involved in any way, that's the way to do it. One last thing, I'm currently doing a back to school giveaway on my Instagram where I give away a lanyard from the company Intentiona. It's really cute. It says you are enough and all the lanyards they sell have little words of affirmation to get you through your day It's a really lovely startup. So yeah, I'll link the direct post down below so you guys can check it out if you'd like Make sure to subscribe if you've made it this far. God damn. This is definitely a long video <laughs> uh, I hope it wasn't completely torturous to sit through <laughs> all that being said Thank you for watching. Thank you to Arteza for sponsoring this video. All the products I used, again, will be linked down below. And I'll see you in my next one. Bye.